In today's video, I'm going to walk you through this project to perform end-to-end -end data engineering from Microsoft Azure to Snowflake using Azure Data Factory. Let's get started. This is my portal.azure.com and I'm going to come to this PowerPoint. I'm going to go through all the steps. I'm going to create Azure Blob Storage account and then create Azure Blob Storage account container and then upload a file to the container and then we can disable Blob Soft Delete, generate shared access signature URL from the file we uploaded and then we can create Azure Data Factory in the resource group and then use the copy data tool activity and then we can create linked services for the Azure Blob and then specify the container path and then also create a linked service for the Snowflake warehouse and specify the warehouse and the database and the login credentials. So we're going to go through all the steps. I'm going to come back to the portal and then I can see the fab resource. I can click on this storage account. Now the storage basically allows us to group together various storage services including blobs, files, queues and tables. Click on that and then I will click on make create and then in the create a storage account under the basics I can choose my subscription and then the resource group to hold that storage account and then in the storage account name I'm going to paste what I copied here so I've got this fabric storage account one for the region I'm just going to leave it in the US if and then I'm going to scroll down for the performance this is going to be standard and I'm just going to click on next. Now in the advanced, I can always you know, disable, enable, on the security and so on. Now I'm going to show you some couple of other things later. Just go ahead and click on review and create. So this is going to validate process and then you can click on create. So this is going to submit the deployment and then we wait for some couple of seconds. Sorted, your deployment is complete so we can go to the resource. And there we go, we can see the fabric storage account one storage account created. So I'm going to come to the PowerPoint so you can see that is sorted. Now I want to go on and create Azure Blob storage account container and then we can upload the file. So in here, I can come under data storage, I can choose the containers tab. And then in the container, I can go on and click on create a new container. Now in the create a new container, I can just give it a name, let's call it fabric container and then this is acceptable click on create and then we can see successfully created a storage container lovely so i can click inside that newly created container and then i can see there is absolutely no file or queues or tables now we can go on and upload the file now i've got this data here now this basically contains the date products, payment type, unit price, and the sales amount in a TXT flat file. So I can click on upload, and then I'm gonna browse through the location of the file. All right, so it has been uploaded, blobdata.txt flat file. Click on upload. So successfully uploaded blobs. So I can see the file. I can also investigate by clicking on that in file. And then I can see the property, such as the overview, the properties, URL, last modified, and so on and so forth. I can also come to the edit tab here, and I can see the content of the file just uploaded, which is exactly what we have in this text file. Love it. Now, I'm going to come to the PowerPoint. Now, in the PowerPoint that has been created, we've uploaded the file to that container. Now, in order for this to work, we need to disable the blob soft delete in the storage account. I'm going to come back to the portal and then go back to the storage account. In the storage account, under the blob service, I'm going to come here and disable the blob soft delete. Now, that's not, actually not going to allow this stuff to work, so click on that. And then we can disable that functionality by unchecking these two boxes and then click on save and then i can close this tab for now so let's go to the powerpoint so that has been disabled and then we can generate shared access signature url from the file we just uploaded because that's very necessary for us to create a connection linked service to the Azure blob and then ingest the data successfully into the destination, in this case, the Snowflake warehouse. 
back to the portal i can go back to that same storage account and then i want to click on the containers and then i want to click on that fabric container and then i want to click on a file and then i want to scroll down or just click on the generate sas and we can scroll down now we can generate the sas token and url there now i'm going to duplicate this tag and then we'll go on and create our azure data factory in the resource group back to the portal so i can go back to the home and then i can click on that fabric resource we can see the resource group click on that and then in the resource group i want to click on this create and this is going to take me to the marketplace so i can search for the azure data factory so factory and then set for that so we can see that here and of course this basically perform hybrid data integration service that simplifies it uh, at scale click on that and i want to choose create a data factory and then under the basics tab we can go on and specify the subscription the resource group and then we can give name for the data factory i'm just going to call it abiola my name just to simplify the whole thing so this is acceptable and then for the region i'm just going to leave it as the way including the version and click on review and create so basically we don't need to do anything special and then click on create and then it initializes the process and then we wait for the deployment to be completed okay deployment succeeded and then we can go back to the resource group lovely so we can see our azure data factory icon and then of course we can also launch the studio so once that's launched we're going to wait for some couple of milliseconds and then we can see all other functionalities to perform data ingestion now let's go to the powerpoint so that has been um, created and then we can go ahead and use the copy data tool in the azure data factory now basically i can click on this ingest which is to copy data at scale once or on the schedule so click on that and then we can choose the built-in copy task and then we can choose the tax cadence or task schedule so we'll run once now and then click on next now we can go ahead and create our link service to the azure blog so i want to click from this source drop down i'm going to click on this chevron and now we'll choose the azure blob storage because that's where i've got my blog data.txt file so go back here and then i want to create a link service by clicking on this new connection now i can choose to rename this name or just use this default enemy anyway so we can give it description that's not needed and then for the connection via integration runtime this will be auto resolve integration runtime now i'm just going to leave this at authentication tag the account key now this is actually not going to work but i'm going to show you something in a moment so i can specify the azure subscription i'm going to choose my visual studio enterprise subscription and then for the storage i've got this fabric storage account one click on that and then i'm going to scroll down so i can test the connection to the link service so click on this text connection and i'm expecting connection successful love it i can click on create and then we'll wait for that to be created super amazing successfully created so we can see the source and then the connection to the link service and then we can go ahead and browse through the file or folder so i'm going to click on this browse and then I can see the container, fabric container, click on that. And then I can see the blob data.txt file. So select that and then click on OK. So we can see the container and then the blob data itself. That's lovely. And then for the options, it's going to be recursively. So we don't need to do anything special here. Click on next. And then for the file format, we can specify, of course, this is detected automatically because this is a tab delimited. So this is fine. We can go ahead and preview the data so we can see the content, the date, product, payment type, unit, price, and the sales amount. So we can close this tab for now. So our linked service is working fine. So for the role data, this is fine. So the first row contains the header. So click on next. And then for the destination, this is where we're going to land or sync the data. 
So again, I can choose the data destination type. Now I want to land the data in my Snowflake. So I'm going to click on the Snowflake. Now, before I create the link service to my Snowflake account, I'm going to come to my Snowflake um, account here in the web URL. In the Snowflake under the databases, I've got this Fabric DB database. And then I can see I've got this Fabric schema. And then under the schema, I've got two tables, sales and the data from Azure Blob. Now, basically, I can just query this select star from data from Azure and then press Control Enter. So basically, I've got the tables without any content, any rows in the table. Okay. Now, this is really important for the ingestion to be successful. I can go on back to the data factory and then I can create a linked service to that account. So I'm just going to retain this uh, this name, Snowflake 1, or let's just call it Snowflake flick 101 and then for the description i can give demo or anything not required for the runtime auto resolve integration runtime and then for the account name now when you create your free maybe um, snowflake account you don't have a special account name now i'm going to come to this um powerpoint now this is my own account name okay so i'm just going to delete this one later on so i'm going to go back to the azure and i'm going to paste here in the account name and this is going to be a lowercase w not uppercase and then for the database name now my database name is fabric let me scroll here okay? so it's called fabric db database so i can go on and type in the same fabric db as the database name and then my warehouse name is the same thing as fabric wh representing warehouse and then for the authentication kind, this is going to be basic and then I can scroll down and of course I'm going to provide my username which I used when I created my Snowflake account, Abiola David Zero. And I'm going to type in the corresponding password I used and then this looks fine. So this is really not needed. I can click on the text connection. Successful. Successful. That's lovely. Click on create. And then the linked service is created to the Snowflake account, which is beautiful. I'm going to see the connection successful here again. So just wait for maybe a couple of seconds. All right. So we can specify. Now, this is the source. It's actually coming from my blog storage account. And then for the destination. So I'm going to just wait for the destination to load. Okay. So basically, I've got the schema name and then the table name so i'm going to come in and choose the particular schema this is going to be the schema name fabric schema dot data from azure blob table so that's going to be the syncing the destination i want to land the data so that is sorted now i can go on and click now please don't check this skip column mapping for all tables so this is should be the way it is click on next and then for the column map you're just going to wait for the columns for the source data and then the destination data to come up and then check whether everything actually corresponds including the data types there we go so we can see the source column name and then the data types and then for the destination so that's fine so click on next and then for the certain stage now i can give name a meaningful name to this task let's just call it um transfer data from Azure Law to Snowflake. So I can give a description to the task. And of course, this needs to be enabled. This staging needs to be enabled. Now, of course, this is going to be the temporary environment to stage the data before landing the data into the Snowflake. So this must be enabled. And then for the staging account link service, I can click on this drop down. And of course, this is going to be my Azure Blob storage one. And of course, I can test the connection whether there is a connection or not. So, connection successful, lovely. And then for the storage path, I can click on this browse, and then I want to choose the fabric container, and then I'm going to click OK. That's going to be the storage path. And then for the enable completion is not needed, so click on next. Now, so you can see this problem staged copy data to Snowflake is only supported when Azure Blob Storage Link Service Authentication Mode is set to SaaS URL Authentication. 
So now this actually not going to work. Now what I actually figured out is I'm going to come back to my blog data, the container, and then I can generate the shared access signature. So again, to do that is very easy. Or let me just cancel this. Now basically in the container, click on the file, that specific file that you want actually ingest. And then in the overview, you want to click on the generate SaaS. And then want to scroll down and then click on generate SaaS token and URL. And then I'm going to scroll down and then I can copy the URL here. Now, the URL is actually the combination of the URL and the token anyway. So I can see the URL and then after this, um, question mark you can see the token here sp equals r is the same thing as what we have here lovely that is copied i can go back to the azure data factory and then i can click back on the source and then i can click on the edit this is where the problem is actually coming from click on edit the link service and then i'm going to switch from this authentication mode type from accounts to sas url so click on that and then i'm going to paste the sas url i copied Control v to paste now the sas token is not needed of course it's already part of this url and then i can click on the test connection to establish connection okay there we go connection successful lovely i can click on apply so just gonna wait for maybe three seconds or less okay successfully applied settings that's lovely i can just click on next 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 and i can click on next okay i can click on next now and then wait okay there we go you can so you can see the sas token url is working fine and i can see the ingestion summary you are running a pipeline to copy data from azure blob to snowflake and i can see the connection lovely and it's going to be the staging area okay which is the azure blob storage and this is the source and this we're going to sync or provision the data the snowflake warehouse i can see the properties the name of the task and then the source and so on and so forth so click on next and then the pipeline begins to validate the whole process and then wait for the status to turn to successful amazing deployment step we can see all the status succeeding lovely and i can see the pipeline so this is basically how we can use the azure data factory to ingest data from the azure blob storage to snowflake warehouse i hope you enjoyed this video if you do